Hi, my name is Andrew Messier and I'm a member of the NetSim development team for Boson Software. I'm going to give you a video walkthrough of Standalone Lab 4 basic show commands. This is an ICND1 level lab. After NetSim finishes loading the lab, I'm going to launch the external lab viewer and drag that over to my other monitor so that I have more room for the NetMap and command line interface. In task one, we're asked to verify that the topology and configurations loaded into NetSim correctly. We see that we should have three routers, router one and router two connected by a serial connection, and router two and router three connected by a serial connection. We don't have an IP address table or any more information to verify, so we'll just look at those three. And this should happen by default when NetSim loads but it's a good habit to get into at the beginning of each lab. In task two, we're asked to configure a host name on router one. We'll issue the enable command to get into privilege exec mode, and then the configure terminal command to get into global configuration mode. The host name router one will configure our host name for router one. In step two, we're asked to issue the show question mark command. And this more down here indicates that there is more output to display. Uh, if we hit enter, we can see one line at a time. Or if we hit the space bar, we can see a full page at a time. And what this does is it enables us to see what all commands we can issue after show. You can do this with any command. So if you were to issue show IP, you could see everything underneath the IP. If you go a step further and issue show IP protocols, you can see what's available after show IP protocols. Here we see just CR, which is carriage return, which means the enter. So we can't go any further. This is a command right here. And the next step, we're asked to issue the show running config command and observe the current running configuration on the router. And this is everything that we've configured after the router started up. So we see here that we've configured our host name. In step three, excuse me, in step four, we're asked to issue the show flash command. And this tells us information about the flash memory on the router. And this is as opposed to the regular router memory. Regular router memory is lost whenever the router powers down flash memory is not. We see here that the operating system image is stored in flash memory which would be a good thing to uh, make sure we don't want to lose when the router powers down. In step 5 we're going to issue the show history command to see all of the recent commands that we've issued. And by default a router will keep 10 of these in its command history and we can configure that if we want to something larger, but we're going to see this default history size of 10 issuing the show terminal command. The show terminal command will tell us information about uh, the input and output interface with a device. To change the history size, we're going to need to get back into global configuration mode. And we're going to change the history online console zero. We're going to do that by issuing the history size. And to set it to 100, we'll just issue history size 100. And to verify our configuration, we'll go back into the show terminal command. And we see that the history size is now 100. And the router will maintain a list of our last 100 commands. A handy way to get to any of those commands in your history is to just ish, is to just type the up key. You'll be able to see your previous and so on commands. And this is handy if you need to issue another command again, such as you know a show command, and you don't want to type the whole thing out again. And step 10, we're going to issue the show protocols command. This tells us information about the line and protocol state for each interface. 
we see that all four of our physical interfaces are administratively down and the line protocol is also down. If we had other logical interfaces created on the router we would see that here but we don't so we just see these four physical interfaces. In step 11 we're going to issue the show version command. This tells us information about the routing platform or the operating system revision number. Um, tells us how long since this device was booted up last. Probably the most important information for your CCNA studies is this configuration register. In another lab you'll learn what that is about and you'll more than likely be tested at some point on what this is and where you can go to find it. And you can find it in the show version command. In step 12 we're asked to configure the current clock on the device. Um, to start out with we'll issue the clock set question mark to see the format for the current time. We need to do hours, minutes, and seconds. So we'll do 9, 53, let's do 0, 0. Question mark to see what's left. We need to issue the day of the month, month of the year, and finally the year. And the next step we'll look at the clock by issuing the show clock and we see what we just configured. In step 14 we'll issue the show interfaces command. This gives us detailed information about each interface. Uh, information such as the MTU size or the bandwidth, delay, reliability and load. Those are all pieces of information that may be important to you whenever you're configuring routing protocols or other activities. Depending on what you're doing, each one of these lines will be important to you at some point. In step 15, we're asked to issue the show IP interface brief command. And this gives us a brief as, uh, information about each interface. It's going to tell us the IP address and the line of protocol state. Probably be issuing this command a lot as you begin with your CCNA level labs to verify your configuration each time that you've done it and to verify that interfaces are up and up. And finally in step 16 we're asked to repeat all these commands on router 2 and router 3. I'm not going to do that in this video but it is great practice for you at home. This concludes Standalone Lab 4 Basic Show Commands. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.